Hello and welcome to Talking with Famous People. My name is host Eric, and this is part two of the retrospective of the channel. Part one covered the period of time from February 2014 through September 2014. This part two covers from October 2014 through February 2015. If you've not yet seen part one, please start there, as this will make a lot more sense if you have the whole story. Talking, talking with famous people. October 2014 was a tumultuous time for me, although you wouldn't be able to tell it from my YouTube uploads. During the month of October, I uploaded five videos, each of them an old song. At this point, I was still thinking about YouTube as a means to archive existing media, stuff I'd already done years before, but had never done anything with. This urge to unearth and publish the past caused some friction. It was a past that all parties had agreed ought to be buried. It was not full of pretty times, although it was full of plenty productivity. Jack Tripper, Janet, Cindy, we're all hanging out at the Regal Bagel. Boy, Andy! Got some feedback for you. Performance reviews. I got some, I got some salty moisture. On the 7th, I, I uploaded two reviews. videos, one about an organ store and the other about Don Knotts, both of them silly freestyles. The first, involving both me and Corey. And the second, a guitar freestyle made by me organ store where they are playing the organ out on that floor showing everyone how easy it is you push this button and it plays it for you oh that's not really playing the organ is it you're just pushing that button right there regardless my next few videos did not include Corey. I'm on the telephone for one hour this morning. It was unpleasant, it was like unpleasant dawning. It was a day that began with a phone call from home. And then it lasted for the bad part of an hour. Next up is Feel This Groove, and it was, realistically, my first actually successful video that people liked. It got way more views than any of my other videos, and it got some thumbs up. However, note that while I considered the likes for Feel This Group hugely triumphant, it was triumphant insofar as it did help me justify to those around me that it was okay for me to be publishing these old works. After that, I put up Four Cars, a fun song in which I play the drums and Mateo Katsu raps on it. I'm you I'm bobbing my head, Eric is playing the drums. You can't see me making rhymes. You can't see me drinking wine. Cause I ain't drinking wine. And then I put up Six Ladies Arguing, another fun song that I thought was high energy and might attract some likes. Finally, on November 4th, about 10 months after my first video, I actually recorded and uploaded a new song. Now, I had made Party in the Park, and that was, in fact, a new song I had written or made up. Any effort I put into that video was spent on the video itself. In this instance, I tried to make the song as good as I could, given the fact that I had very limited equipment at the time and was using simply the internal mic on an old laptop that I had. Even so, this song actually got some likes on Facebook when I shared it on Facebook, and that made me happy. It was a Sunday, sunny afternoon. I was inside my garage. I was gathering some stuff. I walked outside and I saw some records. I said, "What are you doing?" Nothing. We're December was a month of zero uploads and lots of action. Work was really going downhill. My boss was scheming against me, trying to pressure me into signing a new contract. My wife was barely speaking to me. She was convinced that I was self-destructing at work for no good reason, and I was trying to explain to her that I was the victim of somebody who was engaging in very shady and underhanded dealings. At the same time, the only person who was really on my side who I could count on was Kemble. The day after Christmas 2014 marked one full year of abstinence from alcohol, and nobody was dealing with this well, including me. My wife did not like the person I had become, and the person I had become was not merely a person driven by a lack of alcohol, but rather a person who was at war at work, and who would come home and attempt to speak about this to his wife, only to be told that he needed to change his behavior 
to accommodate the boss who was engaged in these underhanded dealings. This was needless to say very frustrating and resulted in a lot of conflict between the ex-wife and me. My best friend concluded similarly to my ex-wife that it was in fact my fault that when I told the story because of the way I told it that in fact the central point of dispute was something that I ought to be giving in on. When I tried to explain that that was a periphery issue, things got messy fast. What I did not understand was that my friend was concurrently going through similar challenges at work, but felt unable to make the sort of change that I was willing to make, namely getting fired. December then was a month of not being heard, at least from my perspective. My ex-wife wasn't listening to me, my best friend wasn't listening to me, and they were both telling me I was doing everything wrong. They didn't like the YouTube channel, even though I was barely doing anything with it. They really didn't like the conflict I was having at work because it suggested to both of them that I was prioritizing the wrong thing, that I was prioritizing my own petty concerns over the well-being of my family. When I tried to explain to everybody that, in fact, if I were to leave this job, I would be able to make more money as a private debate coach, nobody believed me. It is in this context that finally, on January 5th, I uploaded my first video where I just got to talk and just speak about whatever. And I called it Musing About Musing. Good evening and welcome. It's weird that, you know, I've been making a lot of um, audio tapes. Uh, Back when I thought I was dying, I made, started making these audio tapes which were intended to sort of get down all my last important thoughts before I died, right? And it occurred to me, why don't I make these audio tapes into videos instead? Why is that more interesting to me? Well, because, um, go up on YouTube. The thing is, I, I'm interested in the idea of, because I've noticed, like, basically, nobody has any reason to look at my YouTube videos thus far, right? So, it had taken me 11 months from the time when I uploaded my first video to the time when I uploaded my first real talking video. The reason for this was twofold. Number one, I didn't trust myself, and I needed to learn that I was actually trustworthy now that I wasn't drunk all the time. And, number two, my ex-wife did not trust me at all, and she made a fairly compelling argument. Parents, students, and other people in my profession would watch these videos and would hold me to account for every single mistake I made. Thus was I dissuaded for quite some time from uploading videos in which I spoke my mind about my thoughts about anything. However, when I finally did break that wall down and uploaded that one on January 5th, well, obviously I had been starving because the next day, January 6th, I uploaded 10 philosophy talk videos. Of course, when you are creating stuff for whatever reason, of any sort, you run into this odd and difficult reality whereby you wonder why you're doing it, of course, and you have to come to terms with the fact that It's not of any inherent interest or value to anybody. Um, That it's interest and value to people, however, can be realized according to multiple criteria, right? Like, one way to generate interest slash or value in a piece of media, piece of, a piece of medium? A piece of media is weird. It's a weird... This seems shockingly, painfully slow to me, but I'm going to let it roll because I also think it's pretty damn interesting. To me, anyway. Um, I'm finally going to go and play in a poker tournament tonight. I haven't done that in a long time. That should be interesting. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. That's going to be on my gravestone. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Point being, I like the idea of putting up, like, a ton of these videos, random videos of me talking about random shit, and 
building up this big ass thing and then some person will stumble on it and be like who the fuck is this guy who's made like a thousand videos of himself talking about random stuff you know I, I want to do something that's inconceivable of me to me that somebody would be interested in watching it not because I want it to not be watched or whatever but because I want to produce something in that mental space while at the same time, having that thing have at least the possibility of being watched by someone someday. So, I think I do all my little little musings here on uh, video. Two days later, another talking video. And then, for a month and a half, nothing. What happened? Absolute full-blown war at work. And it culminated in my firing on February 16th of 2015. Find out more about the exciting history of talking with famous people and the adventures of employee Eric in the next retrospective coming soon. Talking, talking with famous people.